let's look at a very interesting forex pair, and that is United Arab Dirham and the Great British Pound. First off, read this dis disclaimer carefully. And do your good deed of the day by liking and subscribing. So here is the pair, UAE, Dirham, British Pound, uh, the three, so 3.5% 3 from the low here, uh, some distance from the highs for sure. So let's explore this uh, pair a bit further. So first let's get into the charts. We unfortunately do not have much in terms of uh, seasonality data because this is a bit more es you know esoteric. Okay, so uh, here we have uh, you know you know major picture of uh, an uptrend for uh, the AAD, but as something we can quite clearly see is that this pair moves in these uh, rather strong uh, cycles. So you have this smaller rise decline uh, phases, and then you have these major cycle patterns. And within you know within the majors you usually have you know a few small ones, so that is pretty clear. What is interesting at this point is that this looks uh, a lot like you know a double bottom uh, where you have um, you know you have uh, this and then you have this. It's interesting uh, if you look at some previous times like here and here we do have a double bottomish pattern. Uh, it did result in a pretty substantial rally and in the forex market you know due to the ability to also get some sizable leverage uh, this move uh, could be very very huge so we are seeing that this is treated like a support level and the bulls uh, have been a bit uh, feisty if you look here at rsi uh, looking at the longer term history it is rare very rare for us to really get oversold on the weekly rsi Hence, that was also a reason to expect a bounce. We also rarely get overbought, but we can be more overbought as we saw back here in 2014, 2015-ish. Uh, that was overbought for an extended period. Hence, due to the, due because the primary trend has been to the upside, there's been more instances of overbought than oversold. Which means that the bulls could be ambitious um, because they have a nice setup. The key resistance level is definitively this uh, purple 20 week moving average. It's been key before and uh, I mean there is still some distance but uh, certainly a, you know a good reason to expect uh, a bit a bit more of a fight there. Uh, looking at the correlation here with S&P 500 it is uh, minus 45. Looking here at the daily date points yeah uh, we, do, we are below a lot of the moving averages, um, so we we are kind of hovering in mid-air. And this is one of the reasons why it is uh, beneficial to also look at uh, weekly data points. Here we see the same thing with the RSI we saw uh, on the weeklies, in that, in that the entire range is used, but uh, generally speaking it is rare to be overbought or oversold. And also here on the PPO you can see that uh, there is this healthy dynam dyn dynamic uh, nature and that is uh, something we very commonly see with these uh, you know cycle stocks that have these you know very high and and shall I guess it is more accurate to say that they have uh, you know tall they have tall and deep uh, cycles tall and deep yeah the 100 day moving average is coming in as a resistance level here so that is definitely something to watch out for and definitively a breakout above that level that could really be a catalyst to the upside so based on what we have here on the technicals and the history of this pair this is uh, in the, you know it's currently in the bull camp uh, they have a nice opportunity to do something uh, uh, you know more amb ambitious but let's explore these you know two countries a bit more so let's go a bit down here to economics. Well, it could be a bit interesting to look at the demographics as well. Here we can see population growth rate uh, substantially higher here in United Arab U UAE than in United Kingdom. Uh, so let's go a bit uh, further down. Here we have school uh, life, 14 years for, yeah, you, you know the country and uh, 17 years for... Uh, 
for them. Interesting. Uh, generally speaking, I think that the problem is that people spend too long in the educational system uh, because um, I think I think I think the more gifted you are as a student, the less time you should spend uh, in school. And now it is currently you know the opposite because it is better for society that you know gifted people are just thrown out into the workforce and you know become productive as quickly as possible instead of sitting in some library reading books and writing you know papers that are read by you know maybe a couple people and that's it you know for years of work doesn't make sense uh, so yeah the educational but that's that's a bit of a digression but uh, i think that I, I i think this is i don't think this should increase <laughs> Yeah. Okay, let's go a bit further down here. Uh, government. Uh, maybe we should just skip down all the way to the economy because that is not th the thing. So let's. Let, okay. So the UAE has an open economy with a high per capita income and a sizable annual trade surplus. Successful at f efforts at economic diversification have reduced the proportion of GDP from the oil and gas sector to thirty percent. That's much less than I expected. So that is really. Really good because you no, know, there are some problems for sure uh, when when it comes to the whole fossil fuel business. So since the discovery of oil uh, 60 years ago, the country has undergone a profound transformation. Uh, that's definitely true. The government has increased spending on job creation and infrastructure expansion, and is opening up utilities to greater private sector involvement. The country's free trade zones, offering 100% foreign ownership and zero taxes, are helping to attract foreign investors. Yeah, no, no big surprise there. I mean, these are quite uh, strong incentives. So the global financial crisis, in tighter international credit and deflated asset prices constricted the economy. Yeah, uh, of course. Uh, UAE authorities tried to blunt the crisis by increasing spending and boosting liquidity in the banking sector. The crisis hit Dubai hardest, as it was heavily exposed to depressed real estate prices. Dubai lacked sufficient cash to meet its debt obligations, prompting global concern about its solvency and ultimately a $20 billion bailout from the UAE central bank. Yeah, and this is, this is you know, a broad a problem across the entire world. Debt is a major, major issue. So the dependence on oil is a significant long-term challenge, although the UAE is one of the most diversified countries in the Gulf Cooperation Council. Low oil prices have prompted the UAE to cut expenditures, including on some social programs, but has sufficient assets in its sovereign investment fund to cover its deficits. The government reduced fuel subsidies in 2015 and introduced excise taxes in 2017. A 5%... Okay, a bunch of bad taxes... Yeah, it, it's very interesting. Uh, looking here at the the population below poverty line, nineteen point five percent, fifteen percent in Uni in uh, United Kingdom, so pretty similar. Yeah, overall, uh, this is a very interesting pair. Uh, it's nice to see that UAE is diversifying in its uh, economy, uh, especially that you know oil and gas only is down to thirty. I mean, it is down to thirty percent. So yeah, I think that what we saw here in the charts also is it's very interesting. There is there is definitely an opportunity now for the bulls to rally in a rather amb ambitious way. So like the ball is in their court, will they play it in a very serious way and score some big goals, or will they start to get spooked when you know that that uh, moving average line of defense show up? So that is definitely something to keep our eye on.